Thank you all for coming to this 2019 Interledger Summit. My name is Evan Schwartz. For those who I haven't met, one of the co-inventors of Interledger, been working on it for a long time, and I'm super excited to give a little welcome and talk a little bit about the state of the Interledger to kick this off. We got a really exciting schedule of program, workshops, talks, discussions, etc., for the next two days. So very excited to have you all with us. So welcome and state of the Interledger. Quick agenda. I'm going to go first through kind of why Interledger, reset on why, why we're all here, what this is all about. This is especially geared at, at folks that are newer to the community. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're trying to get out of this summit, and then that dovetails nicely into what we're going to be doing for the next two days and the state, kind of the state of the community and project. So first, why Interledger? Question, why don't cryptocurrencies work for payments today? Imagine a scenario like this. You go into a shop and you say, hey, can I pay with Ether? And the person says, what are you talking about? Everyone else is annoyed. Doesn't work. How about for micropayments? A lot of people in the cryptocurrency space are really hyped about micropayments these days. Only problem is that a lot of micropayment solutions recreate the exact same problem, where one person will go to a website and be like, OK, can I pay for this website with Lightning? Uh, no, sorry, we only accept this, this other one. So really, the main problem the reason why cryptocurrencies are not useful for payments today in most cases is that in order to pay someone, you have to be on the same payment network. The flip side of that is that if you want to accept payments, you have to accept a ton of different payment methods because somebody might want to pay you with one of these many options. The traditional payment space is super fragmented. So in every country, there's different payment methods supported. And if you're a merchant, you have to support a ton of different options because you don't want to turn away customers if they come to pay with something. The fundamental problem is that payment networks at their core are disconnected. There are different, different payment systems from banks to blockchain systems, mobile money networks, et cetera. And all of them are disconnected from one another. This has given rise to a lot of people talking about the idea of the internet of value or internet of blockchains or payments or kind of pick your, pick your favorite term, but it's this, this idea of the internet of, of money effectively. And the reason that we talk about that is because what we need is an internetworking system for payment networks. And the, the word internet actually comes from internetworking. So what, the, what we need is a system that just connects up all of these in the background and just makes it work. Internet working on the internet is really what makes the magic happen. So when I plug into the internet, I don't really have to think about how it works in the background. I just plug in, and suddenly I'm connected to everybody else. That's the magic of internet working, where I can be on a completely different internet service provider than you are. I plug in, and it just, it just works unless you're trying to do video calls. Those almost never work. So how do we solve this payment problem once and for all? We go back to that, this idea of the internet of value. How do we create this internet-like system for money? As many of you know, Interledger has taken a lot of inspiration from the history and the architecture of the internet itself. We started with this very, very shallow analogy to, actually, before we were thinking of the analogy with the internet, we were thinking about the analogy with the web, the value web. And it was a very, very shallow, like we want it to work kind of like the internet does, but it was a shallow analogy. And as we went on, we started copying more and more and more from the internet itself. And realized the systems were actually, there was actually really good parallels with that. And why copy from the internet? One thing that I think is so amazing to reflect on is the fact that the internet was designed for computers that looked like that, but still works today because it was designed so well with these nice abstractions that, it was, that it's able to work with the computers and, and phones that we use today, even though it was designed for this clunky old technology. Many of you may be familiar with this, but this is the diagram of the internet architecture, commonly referred to as the hourglass architecture. What this shows is that the internet's built up of a layered protocol stack. There's many, many different layers to it. At the bottom layer, you have kind of the nuts and bolts, the things that, I, the wires that actually make up the internet. And there's a lot of different types of systems for that. There's wired, there's wireless, etc. On top of that, you have this very, very simple internet protocol. And all the internet protocol says is, I have this packet of data over here. Please get it over there. And it defines a way to express where over there is. 
That's it. That's all the internet really is about at the core layer. On top of that, you can build a lot of different application-specific protocols and technologies. So that's everything ranging from HTTP for the web, SMTP for email, et cetera. So when I say we've borrowed a lot from the inter internet stack, we've really borrowed a lot. And so this is the interledger architecture. At the bottom layer, you have your, your blockchains or your centralized ledgers. On top of that, you might have scaling solutions like payment channels, if you're familiar with those. If you're not, don't worry about it. On top of that, you have the interledger protocol, which is, again, really, really simple protocol for just defining, I have this packet of money. Please get it over there. And on top of that, we can build all kinds of cool applications that we'll get into this weekend. So some key features that I'll just highlight very briefly, not really going to dive into them, um, but I think it's, it's worth calling out some of the main things that we learned from with the, with the internet is, number one, it's an open standard, so that's super important. Two, it's about connecting different networks, so it connects independent operators rather than requiring everyone to be on one network. It's use case agnostic. That's also really important when you're thinking about how to design this kind of system. The internet doesn't care what type of data you're sending, it's all just packets. And then the last one, as I mentioned, it's all just packets. Uh, so that was a really key part of the internet, and that was kind of the last, one of the, one of the later big things that we learned from the internet was the importance of packetizing transactions. So the internet, when you send a big file over the internet, it splits it up into many little chunks and sends it over as that. And that makes it the core of the network much, much more efficient because it's all just homogenous, you know, homogenous packets. So with Interledger, again, open standard, connects different types of networks, it's use case agnostic, and it's about pa doing packetized money. So I, I let, some people have heard me say this before, but I'll throw it out to the audience. What is Interledger's total addressable market size? All the money. <laughs> Nobody wanted, to, nobody wanted to feed it. Um, yeah, it's all the money because what we're really talking about with this idea of the internet of value is creating a single global payment network that connects literally everyone and processes maybe not 100%, but 90 plus percent of all the money. That's what we're talking about. So with that, if you had a system like that, or when we have a system like that, I should say, um, payments will just work. If we go back to this original experience, rather than having this negotiation about do you accept Ether, you would just send it, it would get transacted in the background and wind up in the cashier's account as whatever, whatever the store wants. Similarly with micropayments, I could go and I could pay with whether it's Bitcoin or Ether or dollars or whatever, and it would just go through and be converted on the fly and I wouldn't really have to think about it. So how do we get there? Number one thing we need is people, which is why you are all here. That's a super, super important aspect of this is building a community around this technology, people who care about working on it, people who spend time coming out for Fridays and Saturdays to, to talk about this and work on it. So this is a shot of one of our, one of our last events, uh, but really hoping to grow the community more, and we'll talk about how we do that. Number two, technology, obvious. And number three is use cases. So I just want to give like a very brief shout out to some of the demand drivers in the room. If your name is not up there, I'm very sorry, but uh, come, come and poke me afterwards and I'll, I'll apologize. So that's kind of the what, why Interledger give a little bit of a framing on this summit. So without... Further ado, let's talk about the summit. This summit is for all of you, for the Interledger community. So when we asked you what kinds of things you were interested in seeing for the summit, this is a little silly word cloud of all your survey responses, um, but there's a lot of themes that, that stuck out. Some of the main ones that I'll highlight, there were a lot of people that mentioned that they wanna become more expert on Interledger. They know a little bit about it, um, but they have a bunch of questions they'd like to get asked. So there was a number of people that, that mentioned that. Um, a lot of people wondering about what are the priority use cases that they should dedicate themselves to or work on. I want to answer those kinds of questions as well. 
Another piece was the project roadmap. A lot of people wondering kind of where, where should I plug in? Where is this all, all going? Going to work on that as well. And the last one, a lot of people mentioned they just want to meet collaborators and meet other people in the Interledger community. So um, I'll throw out a question to the audience. So who considers themselves pretty knowledgeable or expert about Interledger? Please raise your hand. A little, sh little timid, OK. Um, <laughs> Who would like to get to know, who would like to know how to get more involved in the Interledger community? Please raise your hand. Excellent. All right. If you didn't raise your hand, you can leave. Um, <laughs> um, all right, so would like to take the next couple of minutes, turn to someone you don't know, and introduce yourself with two things. Uh, what do you want to learn, share, or build this weekend? And then a kind of silly one, if you could use anything as currency and it would just work, what would you use? So please take the next two minute, two or three minutes, turn to someone next to you that you do not know, and if you know all the people around you, shame on you for sitting near people you already know. All right, everybody bring it in for a, for a second. Too excited to meet one another. Ring for service. Okay. Um, nice. Um, all right. Well, I hope you I hope you enjoyed getting to know one another a little bit. Just give give you give you a taste of who's in the room. Would really really encourage you to leave this event having met everybody. So I would really encourage you to take the opportunity to. In, in the breaks and such, there'll be plenty of time to get to know one another. Please go up to, if there's someone that you don't already know, go up to them, introduce yourselves, and feel free to use those as, as starting conversations if you so choose. So launch, going into the state of the Interledger, let's talk a little bit about where the, where the project is, kind of at a high level, and then going into some more specifics. So, Something that I think is, is worth reflecting on a little bit, in 2018, I had so many conversations with people where the response was, wow, this sounds really neat. Why have I never heard of this before? In 2019, I've actually heard, had a lot more conversations with people that have heard of Interledger and are like, oh yeah, that's, that's a really neat, neat technology. I've, I've heard, heard good things about it. And also the, the message about interoperability is resonating much more widely. I think both in the cryptocurrency community and then also in the broader payments ecosystem, there's just so much fragmentation and it, the direction is only towards more fragmentation. Maximalism is slowly dying, continuing to die a slow death. And I think the, the realization is that it's much more powerful when, when people work together to build something. So in the, in the crypto community, there's a lot of tribalism and a lot of like, oh, your thing is stupid. But it's a lot more powerful if we actually work together to build something. And if, we, if we're working on kind of neutral standards, that's something that everybody can get behind and can, can benefit the entire ecosystem. So just to level set, I think we have a massive, massive opportunity here. When I mentioned the thing about all the money, I started saying that as a joke, but I also kind of mean it. Like that, that is really the goal. We also have a lot of work to do. So to check in on, on some of those things, I'm gonna go through five aspects that I think are important to, to check in on with the state of the Interledger project and community. So protocol stack, applications, implementations, network, community, and then we'll get into this summit. So on the protocol stack, if we go back to this Interledger architecture diagram, one thing I will highlight that I think is a really, really great accomplishment as far as I'm concerned is that the core protocols are really stable. It's easiest to appreciate it from the perspective of someone who has like spent, a time, spent literally years working to get them to this point, but while we were working on the core protocols, we were changing them all the time. As anyone who tried to build anything on an earlier version of Interledger can attest to, it was painful because like every couple of months, something was different and it wouldn't work. And in the end of 2017, we kind of said, had this moment of like, oh, I think this is the final version of the core Interledger protocol. And literally since that time, there have been zero conversations, at least that I, ever, everyone's avoided talking to me about it, but um, there have been zero conversations about things that we might want to change about the core protocol. And I think that's really amazing that for almost a year and a half now, it's like, since we said, okay, this feels, feels final, 
we've talked about plenty of other things, but that core is really, really solid. Um, I think the stream protocol is also in a pretty good spot uh, in terms of how you, how you can build on it. There's more to do on the applications or implementations, but the protocols are there. So I think that's, some, that's a really good thing. I think on the, on the other sides of it, we definitely have more work to do. So both on the applications and on integrations with underlying systems. So this dovetails nicely into um, we have workshops. So I'm just going to go give a preview of a bunch of the different workshops and sessions that we are going to have for today and tomorrow. So later, or sorry, tomorrow, we have a session on integrating ledgers, layer two networks, and the plugin architecture. This has been a long and on ongoing topic. Also a big pain point right now is figuring out how to integrate more blockchains and then also just making the integrations that we have more robust. So there will be a session on that. Very much looking forward to that one. We also have a great session on push and pull payments. So this is evolving that top level of the stack a little bit more. There's been, been, been some really good work recently on implementing some application layer protocols meant for common use cases like e-commerce, peer-to-peer payments, etc. So th there will be a session on that. Number two, applications. Um, I would kind of bucket some of the main early interledger applications into these three categories of micropayments, cryptocurrency trading, and then peer-to-peer -peer and e-commerce. So these are also things that we will have sessions on. So as you can tell, I'm kind of punting on describing the state of the interledger and just saying, this is basically what this whole event is about. So uh, we'll have a, a talk today, just after noon, on coil and web monetization. Also, Kava is going to be showing off the Switch API for cryptocurrency trading and kind of a wallet interface for this. Very excited for that. Um, and then there will also be a session on discussions on business use cases for Interledger. So we're going to be discussing how to flesh out some more of these categories of applications. That's the application side. On the implementation side, this is one where I actually I think we have a lot of work to do. I see a lot of comments rolling through on the forum. There's a lot of a lot of bumps that people are hitting trying to use the implementation. So Interledger JS, the JavaScript implementation, is, the, is kind of the main implementation of Interledger now. Um, that's, it's working, it's being used in production. There's also a lot of, a lot of people discovering some issues with it. So we have, we have work to do on the implementation side. We also have some exciting sessions. <laughs> I meant for the other one to come first, so it wasn't me just describing my own session as exciting. It'll be exciting if I get it, get it working and finished. But um, I'll be talking later today about Interledger in Rust. I've been working for a number of months on, on the Rust implementation, and we'll be talking about high-performance Interledger, and hopefully it'll be easy to use. Also going to have a great presentation or workshop on Rafiki, which is a new proposed impl implementation of a connector architecture in JavaScript. So there's a bunch of work going on on the implementation side. I think as a community, we have a lot of work to do on making the implementations really robust so that when people come to the project, they're like, oh, I've heard good things. And then they come to it and they actually have a great experience when they, when they go to try it out. So that's something I would really like to focus a lot of attention on this weekend and hopefully going forward as well. The network side, um, that's another thing that we, we definitely want to grow this network. I think as a result of the implementation still being kind of hard to use, the network is, is still very, very small. And it's very important to grow the network, grow the network of currencies that are supported, grow the number of nodes, grow the liquidity, etc. So that's something I think as a community we really need to focus on as well. So we need to get the tooling in order and then get a lot more people running nodes. So uh, actually right after this, we have a session with Strata about running connectors. And so they're going to be presenting on how you can get a, uh, I think, testnet connector set up pretty easily. Lastly, community. That's what this is, uh, event is for. Um, I think one, one thing I really want to highlight on the community side that I, I'm a big, big fan of is the forum. How many people have accounts on the forum? Awesome. How many people have posted on the forum? All right, nice. Um, Akash Kosla uh, suggested that we needed a better place to centralize discussions about Interledger. We kind of had the mailing list, which was not very active. I mean, the Gitter channels, which were either too chatty or unresponsive, so no, nothing good there. Um, and so this kind of prompted a little bit of looking into what types of online 
you know, medium should we use to have discussions about Interledger? Uh, we created the forum about a month and a half, two months ago, and there's been really, really great discussions there. So if you haven't like looked extensively through there, I was, would really recommend it. And I think it's very, very important for us to use this as a place to have discussions about ongoing topics in the community, and then also have it be a place where newcomers can come and ask questions and get their questions answered. So you'll see the first section is the general question section. One of the things I've been encouraging a lot of people is that, it, A, if you have a question, please post it there. There's a very, everybody, there's so many questions that lots of, I've heard from lots of different people, so it's really, really useful to have good, have written up answers there. I'll also say, if you're someone who is knowledgeable about Interledger and you get asked the same questions a lot, please also post those questions there so that we can get some, some written answers to direct people to. You'll notice a, a bunch of the questions in the general question section are asked by people that are longtime contributors in the community. So don't, like, please just get some questions there so we can turn it into a living FAQ section effect effectively. Um, and then also use it as, as a way to discuss everything from applications, issues, to events and, and protocol design. So I, I'm really, really happy about this and I, I would encourage all of you to use this, make use of it, um, and let's have a good place for online discussion. Another big aspect that I think we, we have to work on is the Interledger project governance. So we're gonna have a session, the, the last session of today will be focused on the project governance. So this is a, a big question is, who owns and maintains everything from the specs, the implementations, the website, and the docs? And I think this is something we need to agree on, hopefully at, at, this, at this event, is can we come out of here with more clarity on who's really in charge and what are the processes for updating these? Who, do, who is responsible for taking care of issues that arise with them or reviewing changes? So this is another one I'm personally very excited about. Before we, we kick it off, I also want to give some, some norms, propose some norms for the summit. And since it is the Interledger Summit, they will all be, there will be three Interledger themed norms. So Interledger interacts with a multitude of ledgers and welcomes their differences. So number one, please be respectful and kind to each other. People come from very different backgrounds, please be respectful. Number two, Interledger nodes limit their peers' payment bandwidth to avoid liquidity hogs. <laughs> Number two, be mindful of your airtime. When we're having discussions, it's very common for people like me and others who speak, tend to speak a lot to take up a lot of the airtime. So if you're someone that, that you know that you have a tendency to talk a lot, please take an opportunity to kind of take a step back, see who else is, has not participated as much and give them space to talk. Also, if you're someone who knows that you don't tend to speak up as much, please try to take the opportunity to, to take up some, some bandwidth, and we would love to hear what you think in these discussions. Number three, Interledger is built to connect everyone. We love and need new participants. So the third norm, let's welcome newcomers. There's a tendency in, in very technical discussions to use a bunch of jargon or terms that not everyone may be familiar with. So when we're having these discussions, there's a lot of technical content, but we also have a lot of newcomers in the room. So I would really encourage all the longtime participants, please try to use language that others are likely to ex understand or explain the terms that you're using if not. And for the newcomers, please don't, feel sh please don't feel shy, please ask questions. If there's terms that people throw out, please just put up your hand or, or chime in and just ask, what are you talking about? Sorry, um, that includes for me too. So quick structure of the event, uh, most of you have programs in front of you. So the, w the way we've got this structured is that we have 45, roughly 45 minute blocks uh, of time for sessions that range from workshops to discussions to talks, and the idea with that is you'll, you'll have some time to participate in those. We also have about 20 minute breaks after each of those. So I would say it's very important that each of the sessions end on time, but because we have these longish breaks afterwards, if people are interested in continuing the discussion or continuing to work on whatever they're working on, please feel free to use that break time for that as well. 
I think it, I'll just highlight, if you're leading a session, it's really important to officially close it on time so that if people want to go get up, stretch their legs, use the bathroom, get some more coffee, et cetera, they have an opportunity to do that and they don't feel like they're kind of have to sneak out of your session. So that's the kind of the structure of the event. We also have a bunch of open time tomorrow. So if people are interested in organizing kind of ad hoc sessions, or I heard some discussion about interest in, in a routing session potentially. So if people want to propose other sessions or, or workshops, feel free to do that as well. Demo sign up. So if you want to give a demo of something that you're working on, whether it's a like directly interle interledger related or sort of tangentially related, um, please feel free to sign up on the, the sheets back there. Last, before I close, I want to give a really big thank you to the organizers. So could we give a hand to Vanessa, Maggie, Marissa, and Liz? Could you all stand? Actually, could you all come up to the front real quick? <laughs> yeah, this wasn't planned, but um, I just wanted to give a big, big thank you to you all. <laughs> I didn't know Anna was, was going to be helping out as much, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so can we all give just a really, really, really big hand of applause for these, these four? <laughs> these five. <laughs> um, they put so, so much work into organizing this event, from or, or, arranging the space and food and all of these things, to figuring out the program, getting in touch with all of you, sending out invites, etc. So this would not be happening without all of your work. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. And with that, happy summiting. Yeah.